welcome to International Hawaii on ThinkTech, where we showcase local import and export companies and the trade industry. I'm your host, Cindy Matsuki, and today we're chatting with Amber Lewis from Hawaiian Islands Freight Association. Hi, Amber. Thanks so much for joining me. Hi, Cindy. <laughs> thanks for having me. So I'm super excited to share what your organization does. I feel like it can help so many small businesses if more people knew about it. So could you briefly explain what the Hawaiian Islands Freight Association is? Um, basically, we're a nonprofit freight association. We're a co-op. Um, so we operate much like a freight forwarder. Uh, we do import, export, and you can pick up anywhere in the United States, uh, even some of Canada. And mm -hmm. we bring the freight in, uh, bring it to our consolidation facility in California, and then we load it onto a ocean vessel and bring it to here to Hawaii. Wow. So how did, how did the association get, association get started? Like, did it start in Hawaii or on the mainland? It's actually started in Hawaii, and uh, it's an interesting story. It's been around since 1963, and oh. a group of businesses in the area um, kind of thought they were being charged too much for their freight, so they <laughs> have a, a great idea to leverage all of their freight, their volume together, and try to reduce the freight costs, and that's how we got started. Nice. So similarly to a freight consolidator, I guess that's what you are, is that you, um, if you have less than container loads, then you can fill a container and then ship it and get the lower rate? Yeah, HIFA itself is a paper company. So um, basically, we contract out all of our services. Uh, we have somebody that we work with, a trucking company on the mainland. All of our stuff goes there, and then um, they consolidate it all together into the ocean containers, like you said. And uh, yeah, we do less than container loads, but we also do full container loads as well. Oh, okay. So how do the benefits work for members? Um, as far as the benefits go, um, there's, I mean, more than I can count. The biggest benefit, I think, is our uh, annual rebate. So the way the rebate works is because we're a nonprofit, at the end of every year, we give all of our profits back to our members in the form of a dividend check. So the other benefits that our members have is just using us as a resource. Um, I mean, we work for you as a member, so basically we'll always fight for lower costs for you. We fight for you to get as much of your claims paid as possible. Um, we can help with complicated logistic moves um, and just as a resource oh. for information. Wow, that's all kinds of stuff. Yeah. So if I understand correctly, so they actually pay you as a service for the freight forwarding and the shipping. So it runs through you. Yeah, basically facilitate everything. So um, Got it. we do all of the the planning and getting everything moving and then the bill at the end of the day will come from us we put it all together in one bill for you oh, okay nice and then where did, where can they receive it do they have to go to the port or is it like a door-to-door -door service no we have to unload all the containers here at our facility so then they mm -hmm. deliver to wherever it needs to go from there so um we have delivery available in maui uh Kauai, big island and Oahu. Very cool. And who, what kind of, what is your target customer? Is it a small business, a large business, or is it just people personal shopping? Um, most of our stuff is industrial resale type stuff. Um, hmm. We do construction materials, uh, commercial, um, not commercial, um, basically construction materials, that type of thing, warehousing stuff. Wow. Love and I, about 80% of our members are small businesses. We have about 1,200 members right now. Wow. Yeah, and I guess construction hasn't slowed down at all. <laughs> um, yeah, construction hasn't really slowed down that much. Shipping has definitely slowed down. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Huh. Just due to the pandemic. Yeah. Do you think it's because, I mean, I, I feel like the need is there, but is it just the channels have slowed down or... Um, I think what's happened is, uh, due to the pandemic, a lot of businesses, unfortunately, you know, have had to close, reopen, and some of them close their doors for good. So it caused a really big slowdown in the shipping industry. Now that things are 
kind of turning around. Um, things are starting to pick back up again. Mm-hmm. But um, we are having some issues. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we, <are> having, <laughs> we have a mascot. <laughs> oh, fun. Um, sorry, I'm back. <laughs> um, some of the challenges we're having right now is a slowdown, especially east of the Rockies, because we're short on, um, you know, all across the board, short on equipment and short on uh, drivers. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Ooh. so we're seeing a slowdown with that. Oh, so you guys have a labor challenge too, just like finding workers? Absolutely. It's mostly the finding drivers. Um, oh. Yeah, so there's been a driver shortage for quite a while. But oh. um, with the pandemic, it's become worse. And then uh, the slowdown with everything changing around because of the pandemic, it's like it's so unpredictable. So it's, ha- it's so hard to know where the shutdowns are happening, what, who's shutting down next who's opening up so um it's been really challenging to get the equipment where it needs to be so right now the equipment shortage um is due to that wow so what are your customers doing like do you feel like there's been um a slowdown in customer demand as well or is it just they just have to wait longer um there has been a slowdown in demand as far as um because people are shutting down and opening back Mm -hmm. up Mm -hmm. Um, some people for good so you know obviously the volume is going to go down but for the most part those who are shipping are just having to wait a little longer to get their stuff Mm. okay and has you your organization have to had to make any changes during the pandemic um we have made some changes i mean even though stuff's picking back up um we the biggest change, I think, because the way our business model is set up, when our volume goes down, our costs go down accordingly. So um, it didn't affect us that much uh, as far as, you know, costs, because we keep our administrative costs low. Mm-hmm. Um, but the main thing we did have to do is make sure our employees were safe. So we did the work at home initiative where we had everybody working um, from home because we had the ability to do so. And then we did reduce our staff a little bit. But as far as changes with our association, I think that's really the the main thing. Um, mm-hmm. We also reached out and, and you know, like we always do, um, try to get lower rates to be more competitive and, you know, try to take some of the, the sting off of the whole pandemic in a whole. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I've been reading how shipping rates have just been climbing and climbing. They do. Um, they do when they have. Uh, mm-hmm. I don't foresee, as long as the pandemic stays steady, I mean, who knows, but as long yeah. as the pandemic stays steady and um, what you're going to start seeing moving forward is that all of the equipment issues are going to start working themselves out because the shipping companies are really diligently, you know, working to get equipment to those areas to try to even things out. So you will see things picking up. And um, as long as everything stays stable in that, you know, aspect, uh, the only increases, big increases you should be seeing moving forward are just our general increases that happen every year. Mm. Well, that's good. That's a good thing. Yeah. Do you guys work yeah. consistently <laughs> with um, the same shippers? I guess there's a limited amount that come to Hawaii, but how does that work? Do you have contracts or are you, are you just shopping around and getting the best um, rates that you can? Um, we do mainly work with Pesha and Mastin for our uh, incoming freight. Mm-hmm. Um, we do full containers through Pesha. Most of our LCL goes through Mastin right now. So we do have contracts with them. Um, we do, when we're doing full container loads, we send the request out to both so we can try to get the best rates. Uh, as far as the mainland shipping goes, when they're picking up your freight, we send out for quotes and try to get the best rates that we can get. Um, all of our stuff that we, like all of our pickup rates and all of our delivery rates here on the island, we don't mark up. So we, we give you all of those at cost. Wow, that's amazing. How do you guys, um, so there is something that you take for just administrative costs for your staff and to keep everything running, but then everything else just goes back to the members? Right. Yeah, so we try to keep our costs very, very low as much as possible. 
Um, in the history, at least since Jan's been here, she's never raised our rate because of administrative cost increase. So whenever we have an increase, um, we basically try to be as creative as we can to try to account for that increase or we try to absorb it. So, you know, we got we to gotta make sure our, our bills are paid. You know, the steamships, when we ship, we have to pay them and within 30 days or however many, you know, whatever their terms are. So we do need to have the money up front. Um, but if we are in a good place and we can absorb the increases, we do. Wow. So maybe could you just walk me through, like, say I'm a new customer and I'm just like my business in Hawaii is just starting to scale. And so I need to start shipping things or I'm starting to export. Like, what is the process that I should go through if I wanted to become a member and how does that work? To become a member, it's really easy. You just give us a call. We can send you the membership packet. You fill it out, pay your $50, and you can start shipping immediately. Um, you can ship as a non-member. You just won't get the benefit of the rebate at the end of the year. So your oh. shipping will go towards the other members. <laughs> <laughs> so and it's only $50. That's so crazy. Yeah, $50 one-time fee, and then you're a member for the life of your business. So wow. once you get your membership started, you can contact us and um, either, you know, schedule your pickup or you can ask for a quote and, you know, see where we're at cost wise. And so basically, I just let you know, OK, my supplier is here and I and this is my shipment and you can let me and then that's it. And then you'll take care of everything else. Yeah. Um, most of the time we have you call directly to the terminal because that way um, it's a lot easier to relay information directly rather than third party. So um, people ask me all the time to schedule their pickups for them and I do forward the stuff to the terminal and, and get it facilitated, but it's pretty easy. You can either yeah. contact us for it or you contact the terminal directly. Oh, I feel like the people that we work with at the foreign trade zone, I mean, just some of the stories about shipping, it seems, it seems complex. And then maybe that includes the stories about working with suppliers as well, or, you know, your buyers on the other end, but just like shipping seems, seems like a complex thing, or maybe it's easier just because it's domestic. Is it all domestic for now? Shipping is complex because there mm -hmm. is a lot of different avenues. There's a lot of things to learn. Things are changing often. Mm -hmm. um, the domestic shipping isn't quite so bad, but, um, you know, the best advice is just to gain as much information as you can, especially here in Hawaii where everything is import. So, you know, your shipping cost is a huge cost when it comes to your pricing. So it can mean the difference between whether you can stay competitive or not in your field. So um, it's important to to gain the knowledge, to understand, or at least if you cannot, if you don't have the ability, you know, if you don't have those resources, you can reach out for help. And our association will, you know, whatever resources we have available to us, we, we give to our members. That's great. Do your members ever get together? Like, do you have any member events? <laughs> um, we do actually, we have an annual meeting every, every year in April. Nice. Um, it's a big luncheon. So, um, you know, all the board members are there and uh, we give speeches, you know, um, the GM will give a speech and, and let everybody know where the, how the year went and, you know, we give the free lunch just as an added benefit for being a member and, you know, being able to put faces to everybody. Yeah. I mean, I miss that, like just the networking, like mm -hmm. having in-person events. And then even though you yeah. listen to the speeches, it's more like, meeting all the other small business owners and you know, talking about, yeah, <laughs> mm -hmm. that's really great. Um, yeah. So right now you're providing service to just the mainland or did you say you go international? You do inter international shipping as well? Currently we're not offering international. Um, we are looking to, to maybe eventually get into that. Um, it gets really, really complicated with international. So we're going to have to get um, a specialist on board to, who has some, has some uh, experience in that area. But mm. it's not out of the realm of possibility. We try to bring as much services as we possibly can. Um, mm -hmm. We do air freight, but it's, it's mostly domestic. Oh, okay. And you use, like you use um, any of our local carriers for air freight? 
Yeah, we use Pacific uh, Pacific Air Cargo and Aloha Air Cargo. And then we also mm -hmm. utilize FedEx for some of our stuff to uh, express items. Wow. That's really interesting. I mean, that's amazing. I think that's a great service. Um, we are going to take a quick break. I'm speaking with Amber Lewis from the Hawaiian Islands Freight Association, and this is International Hawaiian Think Tech, and we will be right back. Hi, I'm Rusty Komori, host of Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. I was the head coach for the Punahou Boys varsity tennis team for 22 years, and we were fortunate to win 22 consecutive state championships. My show is based on my book, also titled Beyond the Lines, and it's about leadership, creating a superior culture of excellence, and finding greatness. I feature a wide range of amazing guests who share valuable insights about how going beyond the lines leads to success in everything you do in life. I'm looking forward to you joining me every Monday at 11 a.m. Aloha. Thank you. Hi, welcome back to Inter International Hawaii on Think Tech. And I'm your host, Cindy Matsuki, and today I'm speaking with Amber Lewis with the Hawaiian Islands Freight Association. So Amber, we were talking about how um, people can come to you with their shipments. And I know that there's a lot of potential for things to go wrong, like either you get the wrong items or something happens during, like things get damaged or lost. And then I remember that story that was, I think it was last year, that one container ship lost almost 2,000 containers. I can't even imagine like, full container loads sitting at the bottom of the ocean. Yeah. Yeah. So is that, I mean, do you have other horror stories about shipments gone wrong and what can people do? I think that, um, I think that one of the worst things that can happen with your shipment is that it doesn't arrive and nobody knows where it is. So in those mm -hmm. cases where like it goes overboard, which isn't a common <laughs> occurrence, but it does happen. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's important to have certain safeguards in place to make sure that if something does happen to your freight that that you're covered. Mm -hmm. So what can people do? Like how do businesses protect themselves? So I think what a lot of people don't understand um, as far as claims and loss and damage goes in the freight industry, um, you know, you get in that state of mind where, you know, you broke it, then you have to pay for it. And unfortunately, that's not how it works in the freight claim world. So the most important thing to mm -hmm. know about freight claims is insurance. Mm -hmm. um, insurance falls, insuring your freight falls back on the person who's shipping it and not on the actual carrier. Most carriers have mm -hmm. limits of liability. So in most cases, uh, a carrier will have pennies on the pound of how much that they will cover. And that's the maximum that they'll cover. So if you wow. have something that's like high value freight, let's say it's a $50,000 piece, you might be looking just to get a couple hundred dollars on it if you just rely on the freight forwarder themselves to, to, you know, go through the claims fund for your loss. So insurance right. is very, very important. So do you, do you provide insurance or do you help people find insurance? And does it do you have to get insurance per shipment? Um, you do have to get insurance per shipment. Most freight forwarders, I know we have an insurance company that we work with. Um, cargo cover who does marine insurance. Most places, most freight forwarders will have somebody that you can work with. I do believe there's outside brokers you can use too. Hmm. Okay. And then what's important about how they file the claim, like after if if it's lost or if things arrive damaged? Um, the one thing you want to do is document as much as possible. Hmm. So um, when you receive your freight, you want to yourself or train your employees that they want to inspect every part of the freight, make sure that the piece count is correct, make sure that every little um, tear or if there's a corner of the box crushed, you want to notate mm -hmm. all of that on the driver's copy of the cruise delivery because um, any of that that could indicate that there's mishandling or maybe it got banged around a bit. Um, if they don't 
have that information on the driver's copy, a lot of times they won't approve your claim. So oh, wow. it's really important to take photos when it arrives. If you see that there's anything that's amiss, um, once you've taken the photos and broken down the freight, if you see that there is damages, you want to take more photos and then contact the carrier right away oh, and, and let them know that there is a claim. Um, if you've filed insurance, you also want to contact your insurance agent. Wow. So how did, but then I guess I could see there's multiple people that have touched your product, right? There's the trucking and then there's the, <laughs> then there's the freight consolidators and then there's the mm -hmm. shipper and then, and then it comes to Hawaii and then there's the trucking. And so like, does the, the insurance company kind of figures that out or? Yeah, so I do the claims for our company. Um, the way it works is everybody's kind of trying to cover their own yeah. self. Yeah. So if they're all inspecting the freight when it comes in and they're notating any mm. damages going, we didn't do it. Right. <laughs> it wasn't right. us. So um, that's kind of works in your benefit because then you can kind of go down the line and have a good idea of where the, the damage might have happened. When you're filing an insurance claim, usually they'll do that for you. You don't have to worry about any of that. Um, just know that once you receive the freight that you would need to make the appropriate, appropriate you know, notations. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Got it. So the I driver's see. So, copy. <laughs> yeah, the driver's copy. Um, yeah, that's important. So then the trucker, if they were unloading the container and they, they did see damaged, like the boxes or the crates, would they actually note that down when they pick it up? Is that how that works? If they, yeah, if they see damage, they note it mm -hmm. down because they don't want to get blamed for it. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. I see. That makes sense. That's good. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's so important. I think people would just be freaking out and not thinking to like document everything. So most people don't know, and it's not that um, it's not that the thing wasn't damaged. It's not that they're you know trying to get one over, but. Uh, unfortunately, there's a lot of carriers out there that'll look for any loophole to not pay you your claim. So you really want to be prepared and make sure that you're making all the right documents, you know, notations and document everything. So, so that way you have the the highest chance of getting paid out the most. Mm. And does the insurance cover most of the value of your goods or does it depend on, you know, what kind of coverage you get? So it'll depend on what kind of coverage you get. Um, mm -hmm. it, it works a lot like a car insurance, right? So you'll have a deductible or no deductible if you want to pay a little bit more, depending on, you know, what insurance company it is. Um, and you write down the value of it and then the freight value. And then they'll cover whatever they feel is, is necessary or whatever. If it's a total loss, then they'll look into that and you'll have to prove how much it costs you. Um, so one thing they won't cover, what people don't understand, is how much that the, the resale value, like how much they're going to sell it for. Because there's, you know, you think, well, I'm out all of this money now because I can't sell this, but they only cover how much you pay for it. Oh, I guess that makes sense, but that's tough. Yeah, because yeah, as a business, that's a big loss. Yeah. yeah. Got it. So, like, for example, the one container ship, that would be a complete loss, right? And and you know what happened. Huh. Yeah. Yeah. And those are the easy ones because you know what happened. Um, there's everything. There's proof that it happened. Uh, because it's such a big loss, I would imagine that the, the steamship would use their, you know, file their own insurance claim to cover it. Mm -hmm. Got it. So the insurance company that you filed with would go after one and then they would have to cover it. Yeah. Got it. And the one thing um, that we put in place. Uh, for you know, it's most important insurance to cover on the higher stuff. If you have the lower stuff, sometimes it doesn't make sense because if you have a five hundred dollar deductible but your item's only two hundred dollars, then it doesn't make sense <laughs> to, to get the insurance right. Yeah. But yeah. our company covers up to five hundred dollars on anything that happens over the ocean. Uh, five hundred dollars, sorry, per shipping unit, so per pallet, per per piece if it's loose. Um, for anything that was damaged during transport in the ocean or our negligence. So um, hmm. we created, because, you know, the carriers, they don't want to pay. They point fingers at each other. <laughs> so That's we created a, a claim fund where all the carriers pay in that we work with. And then um, when things happen, if they're pointing hmm. fingers at each other, we can cover you still out of the claims fund. 
So wow, that creates an extra, really cool. an extra added bonus and, and coverage protection. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's really good. Yeah, especially for small businesses. I mean, even small amounts could be huge hits, right? Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. What do you see as um, some of the biggest challenges for Hawaii companies that are shipping? I think some of the biggest challenges with, you know, any company is rising freight costs. When costs go up, um, it's difficult. Mm-hmm. And you can't do anything about it. No, and here in Hawaii, it's even worse because everything has to be imported. So the freight costs, um, I think there's also a challenge with space. Like we're in a small area. There's not a lot of warehousing space for the small guys. So Mm -hmm. um, they don't get the benefit of being able to buy in bulk and get those discounts. Mm. So that's where we try to step in and and consolidate everything and and try to get a lower price. That's why Mm -hmm. we were created. Mm. Hey, we should cross market. We have warehouse space, so <laughs> let your customers know. <laughs> yeah. And do you do you foresee the shipping rates eventually coming back down, or do you think they're going to plateau and just, or they're going to keep going up? They fluctuate. You know, honestly, yeah, it's um, always up and down. Yeah, there's always fuel increases, and then the cost of fuel goes down, and it goes back down, and. Um, mm. Every year, there's a general rate increase, so it goes up. But I mean, I've seen it. At one point, we were up to six dollars a cube, I think, and right now we're at five something. So um, mm. it does come back down and 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 fluctuate. Um, we mm. go up and down with the steamships, and then, like I mentioned before, if we can absorb the extra increase, we will. No, oh, that's really good. Would you have any advice for somebody starting out as a business and starting to? import or export i think the the best advice is to learn Mm -hmm. just um you know get a good grasp on purchasing and shipping practices and what avenues and lanes you have available um ways you can lower costs because Mm -hmm. you know like i said that's that's the difference between whether you can price competitive you know competitively Mm -hmm. or not is Mm -hmm. that freight cost exactly That's great. And I think your association would be huge to kind of manage like that initial hassle of getting your goods, just the logistics. Yeah. Um, Yeah, We always, we always ask our members to use us as a resource. I mean, sometimes there's these complicated logistical moves mm -hmm. and, you know, people don't know where to start because they don't know, you know, what all the lanes are and and how Mm -hmm. to get something from, from here to there. If it's big, ugly freight, stuff like that. So, um, (laughs) We always ask that you just give us a call and let us work it out for you. Um, we can tell you which, awesome. which ones are going to be fastest, which, you know, lanes are going to be the best price, and, and you can make decisions from there. That's so great. I'm yeah. excited to let people know about your organization. Thank you. <laughs> so I think we're going to leave it there. We've been okay. chatting. Uh, you've been watching International Hawaii on Think Tech, and today we've been chatting with Amber Lewis from Hawaii Islands Freight Association. Thank you so much for sharing your time with me, Amber. It's been great talking thank to you, you and so learning much for about having me. <laughs> yeah, thank you very much. And thank you to our viewers for tuning in. I'm Cindy Matsuki, and we'll be back in two weeks with another edition of International Hawaii. See you next time. Thanks.